The following is a Gaming Blues Empire special presentation. This video may contain mature language and graphic content. Feast your eyes on the Super Nintendo Gaming Console. Look at that thing. That thing looks awesome. Super Nintendo had over 700 games released in North America. A few bad ones flip through the cracks. It's probably over a thousand games that released over in Japan. And today, we're going to take a look at the top worst Super Nintendo games. Alright, here we are playing Pit Fighter. This is the top worst Super Nintendo games. Now, Pit Fighter originally released in the arcade around 1990, and it was not a bad game at all. It was actually pretty decent. I mean, look at this guy. He's about ready to give all his money to this game. If you don't believe me, look at the top of this ad. This arcade cabinet's getting more money than a freaking stripper at a strip club. Now, fast forward about a, a year and a half later, we have a Super Nintendo port. There's a huge difference between the arcade version and the Super Nintendo version. And uh, the Super Nintendo was definitely capable of uh, doing better than that. This is probably second to Shaq Fu of being the, one of the most obvious shitty games on the Super Nintendo. Let's check it out. And let's check out why it's shitty. Look at that, it says Pit Fighter. So right here you must pick your character on the select screen. And we're going to pick the Expo Wrestler. He's on steroids, look at that. And here we are playing Pit Fighter on the Super Nintendo. It definitely pales in comparison to the, uh, hey, what the hell? Arcade version of the game. It definitely looks like a piece of shit. I mean, what the hell is this? Controls are garbage. Uh, one reason why the game sucks. It doesn't even, it's sen first of all, it's censored, I believe. So it doesn't even have blood, which kind of really sucks. What's the point? There's the digitized graphics on it. Horrible. I mean, look at that. The Super Nintendo could have definitely done better than that. I mean, look in the background. You see the crowd? They look like shit. Feast your eyes on the shittiest sprites of all time. Look at that. And I already got a game over. I mean, what the hell? That's got my ass handed to me. So another thing about this game in particular. This game is a prick. So here we are. We're going to try this game again. And this time we're going to pick uh, someone else that, you know, might not be on steroids. We'll try this guy out. See if we can kick some ass. Hey, what the hell? He saw my guy was actually posing, trying to bow down, show, showing some respect to his opponent. And you know what? My opponent didn't show no respect. He went over there and beat my ass right away. I basically got violated. I mean, what the hell is wrong with this guy? It's definitely one of the top shitty games on the Super Nintendo. Now our next craptastic shitty Super Nintendo game is Rise of the Robots. Check that out. Now Rise of the Robots was originally designed for a computer. And then it was ported to uh, gaming consoles. Unfortunately for the Super Nintendo, that computer that I just showed you took a huge giant shit, crammed it into a cartridge, and basically that was the Super Nintendo's port of Rise of the Robots. Let's check it out. Yeah, oh, it's made by Acclaim. The best part of the game is the Acclaim logo. That logo is so awesome. Look at that. All right, the introduction keeps going on and on. All right, let's get to the point. And right there, we have some type of a 3D-looking animation. What the hell is that? Punch me in the face. Rise of the Robots. The title screen actually looks cheap. It definitely looks like some horrible CGI digitized liquid shit. And here we are at the main menus here. One player, two player or options. You can definitely tell they kind of gave it like that CGI 3D look. And it's trying real hard to make the Super Nintendo look like it, it can produce 3D graphics. I mean, granted it can with the FX strip, but give me a break. What the hell? I went back to the title screen. Son of a bitch. I'm picking one player. What the hell is going on? Oh, here we go. Mission brief or training. Let's skip the training. And uh, before you go into the uh, game right here, it has a little cutscene. It's actually pretty impressive for Super Nintendo. What the hell is that? Am I playing Mech Warrior? I hope that's not what I'm fighting. You just turned red. That's not good. Yeah, that means it's really pissed off. Alright, let's get to the game. What the hell is that? It looks like some Mech Warrior shit. Look at that. Or perhaps it's Gun Griffin. Oh boy, some fighting game right here. So, not the prettiest looking game in the world. I mean, look at this. I've never actually played this before. This is... Pretty interesting. Not really. Oh, you wanna fight yourself, bitch? 
Well, the controls are definitely delayed. But that really doesn't matter too much, because I think the controls really, really suck. What the hell's a jump button? Well, I found the jump button, but it doesn't make any damn sense. I'm getting my ass kicked by a mech. More like a digitized mess. I believe this game was on the computer also, but it actually had actual 3D graphics. I actually might have played that before, I'm not sure. And I just got my ass beat by a robot. Now as you can see there, it says Loader Wins! Look at that! Piece of shit. Now we're having a battle too, dude. This blue guy right here almost looks like Pepsi Man. However, Japanese viewers will know who Pepsi Man is, for sure. This son of a bitch has a long reach, he can actually hit me from across the damn screen. Like, what the hell? How do you do moves in this game? <laughs> there probably is no moves, it's nothing but punch and kick! Punch and kick! Alright, you can punch with that button, and there's a few different punch buttons, and there's like one kick button right here. Actually, there's two kick buttons. Punch and kick! Punch and kick! Or you can kick and punch. Okay, I just got my ass in this week again. This game, this game sucks. As expected. This is like a slightly step up from Pit Fighter, but you know what? I what the hell is that scary shit? Stop looking at me, you fuck! And for our next game on the uh, shitty Super Nintendo game list, never played this one before. Upon doing research, Street Combat happens to be a shitty Super Nintendo game. I never actually played this before. So Street Combat was released in 1993. Now, this game is so bad that I'm surprised that a flyer actually exists. I mean, look at this monstrosity. Have a brawl with Super NES graphics. So on this flyer, it's actually bragging about the graphics. And to be honest, the graphics are not really that good for Super Nintendo standards. The action will knock you out. I mean, who the hell are they kidding? Then if you look at the box art, this, this guy wants to be Mega Man or something. He's waving his arms up in the air like a freaking ape. Well, apparently this guy is having an identity crisis because he apparently thinks he's also from the United Federation of Planet Starfleet with his Star Trek visor. Now, he can't make up his mind whether uh, he's from Star Trek, he's from Mega Man, or perhaps he's a professional wrestler with that mullet. Yo, I'm going to kick your butt! I'll show you some new tricks. That doesn't sound too cool. It's time to slice and dice. Let's rumble in the jungle. What the hell is this? You're a great fighter. Nah. Prepare for doom, chump. I will admit, I actually enjoyed that. That was actually pretty cool. Actually, the only thing that wasn't cool was uh, this rapist of a clown right here that, you know, threatened to show you some new tricks. I mean, I'll be totally honest. I'm not sure what the hell he's holding in his hands, but I have a feeling it's going up someone's butt. Street combat. Look at that title screen. A whole bunch of shit moving in the background. Let's play the game. Supposedly the game's shitty. Let's check it out. And I did not get to choose my character, so I guess there's no character select screen. And I'm not sure. I'm assuming I'm the guy in the top left, but we'll see what happens here. At least I'm not fighting that clown. Alright, definitely is a fighting game. And both characters have a life bar up there, so that means we have to kick each other's asses. And... This I'd never actually played before. And that's probably a good thing because the controls appear to be shitty. Whoa, what the hell is that? The characters look really stupid. But strangely enough, the actual, the background actually looks uh, not too bad at all. And I just got hit in the face by a Street Fighter 2 ripoff maneuver. So uh, that bitch with a mullet right there just, just happens to be me. Just got his ass kicked. Not good. Controls on the game. It's like one of those games that don't make sense. You have to try, try to guess. How to do a move on the game. To keep it simple, it sucks! And this guy right here in the blonde here kind of looks like Robocop or something. What a fucking mullet on his head. I mean, look at that. It's like I could have sworn when he landed on the ground he had some tits. Maybe it's a woman character. But well, wait a minute. His name is Steven! The guy in the red pants kind of looks like a wrestler. He also has here, like, Hayashi from Tekken. But he's not as cool, of course. He sucks. And again, I don't know. What, what the hell is this? I got my ass beat again. It's going to be quite often that you lose because the controls suck. And uh, this is the screen that you're going to be seeing most of the time when you play this game. I mean, look at that. Who the hell is he trying to be? Mega Man? It's Mega Man with tits in the mullet. 
Wait a minute. So instead of going back to the main menu, it's gonna make me fight that guy again. Oh wait, there is a character select screen. What the hell is this? Oh, this is bullshit. Alright, well, let's choose that character. Looks like the same damn character in different clothes. Steven. So it is the same character. Same Moet. Same corny ass guy, but in this different clothing. So how the hell is that supposed to help me out? I don't get it. Man, what is that? Is he is he doing break dancing? Look at this. I'm seriously trying to kick this guy's ass. Okay, I would expect the clown to do something like that to me, not that guy, but that What the hell? What get up! What the hell's he doing? Oh wait, I died. That's a funny way to die. When your leg is wide open. What are you, dirty whore? We have Captain Novolan, which I don't know what the hell this is, but I never played it before, but that title screen looks frightening. Now, Captain Novolan is a very obscure educational platform based on diabetes, which is a really bizarre idea for a video game, and it was released in 1992. Now, if you uh, take a look at the box art right here, uh, this is basically what nightmares are made of. I mean, just look at that. That is frightening. <laughs> I mean, what, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? That is the weirdest looking shit I've ever seen. Is that a broccoli on that thing? Is that a donut? What is this? That certainly doesn't look like ice cream. It looks like shit. And that Twizzler looks like it wants to murder you. All right, so this shitty game came in three different languages. French, Spanish, and English. So this game literally plagued probably like three continents. I mean, what the hell? All right. Please enter the code your doctor said is best for you. What kind of shit is this? You tell me I have to go to my doctor and get a code so I can type it into here just so I can know what code is best for me. What? What kind of shit is this? What kind of game is this? Yeah, one more thing before you go. I have a prescription. A Super Nintendo game. Captain Novelin. I want you to try this out. This is the code right here. When you go home and insert the cartridge into your Super Nintendo, you have to enter this code in. If you play it twice or three times a day, you will kill yourself. Now, just remember, I never gave this to you. Okay, so it says, Captain Novelin is a game that teaches you about diabetes. What the hell? But remember... This game doesn't tell you how to manage your diabetes. Your doctor will tell you about your individual care. Warning! Any change of insulin should be made cautiously and only under medical supervision. So this game is about diabetes. Why the hell would you want to play a game about diabetes? I mean, the whole purpose of playing a game is to get your mind off things that could kill you. I mean, if I wanted to learn about diabetes, I would go to my doctor. Alright, so here we have our character walking on the treadmill watching, apparently, the news on TV. Now, we have breaking news. This just in, aliens have landed on Mount way up there. They are disguised as sugary junk foods and have been ordered by Blubberman, the leader, to take over Earth. I mean, how corny is that? And I can just see where this game is going. This game uh, already looks pretty fucking stupid because if you're sitting on your ass playing a video game the last thing that you're worried about is catching diabetes because you're probably stuffing your face with cheetos and she sure the fuck looks happy that you have diabetes because guess what it's more money in her pocket look at that shit you need to check your blood sugar four times a day all right well this is probably not what you want to play for a video game you, you know if you're diabetic you probably don't want to have shoved in your face every five seconds Alright, so apparently this is something to do with your blood glucose level. And, uh, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I will say that this game is actually pretty dangerous. So what happens if you did take more insulin and you actually listen to the game and you ended up in a diabetic coma because of it? I mean, what the hell? Was this game prescribed to people by doctors? I mean, what the hell is up with this game? You have got to be kidding me. This thing actually shows you how to, to take insulin. Look, look at this. 
All right, well, there's my doctor right there, I mean, because he's telling me to eat, what? Okay, he's telling me to eat peanut butter, toast, half a banana, a bowl of cereal, a glass of milk. You want me to eat all that at once, really? Well, we're actually playing a game for once. I mean, after being lectured about diabetes, we can actually play a game. And we're being lectured by diabetes again. So I can see here, my character only just walked a few inches, I suppose, and uh, right away they're giving me tips on how to give myself insulin shots. I'll keep that in mind, just in case. And look, there's a fucking donut. That's ridiculous. This game is insulting to people that have diabetes. Just... And what is that? Cereal? Sweets! So, uh, basically this game insinuates that every single person that has diabetes is a fat fuck that eats donuts and scarfs down sweets. Which is, uh, pretty insulting. Yeah, I need to check my, uh, blood sugar four times a day because blah blah blah. I eat too many fucking donuts according to this game. And again, not all diabetic people get diabetes from stuffing their face with junk food like this game portrays. I mean, that's pretty insulting. I mean, granted, yes, there is some people that do that, but not all. And that right there is a big fucking killer donut. And what is this, peanut butter? <laughs> this is, there's that fucking scary donut. Get away from me, you piece of shit. Ah, you didn't get me. Ha 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 ha. A box of sweets. It's like a fucking sexy thunder hiding in a box. And here we are playing a Rocketeer, which I never played this either. What the hell? What the hell is that? A Rocketeer released on Super Nintendo in 1992. And as you can see right here on the, uh, there's a little poster here. It's a flyer. It actually has the Rocketeer and it has the little flying guy right there with the jetpack. That guy looks like he uh, looks like one of those Ultraman characters from Japan. I mean, look at that. Uh, according to the flyer, the hottest graphics we've ever seen, according to GamePro TV. And here we have the box art, which pretty much looks the same as the flyer, except with the uh, Super Nintendo stuff on it. And that's uh, just in case you're curious about what the cartridge looks like. Well, here it is. Licensed by Nintendo. So apparently this is another uh, shitty Super Nintendo game. And I never played this before, and uh, apparently this is a sample of what the gameplay looks like right here. Number of players! Uh, well, we're gonna stick at one player. What the fuck's up with the funeral music? And uh, before we go into the game, we have like a little comic strip type thing going on. Uh, the artwork actually looks pretty cool. The music will certainly give you nightmares though. And here we are, we have some airplanes. Very, very ugly looking airplanes. And how the hell do you... What the hell? How do you play this shit? Okay, so there is a throttle button, but you push up and down for your plane to go up and down. Push down, it goes up. Push up, it goes down, pretty much. And that's basically all the game is. Oh wait, you can turn... Oh shit. Did I just crash? Is there anything else to do in this game? I guess if the game's not thrilling enough, you can get yourself a magnifying glass and, uh... Zoom in on the bottom of the screen and you get like a third person perspective of what's going on. I mean, that's really exciting. Ooh, look at that. I mean, seriously, just fly around in circles, that's it. I mean, even the Atari 2600 had games that were more complex than this simplified pile of shit. I mean, this is literally boring. I mean, that's it. It's boring. Okay, so you lost the race. Climb back in there, blah, blah, blah. No, I, I don't think so. And then we have this game. You see, this game right here made it to the shitty Super Nintendo game list. Visual concepts so far was looking pretty good. Look at those graphics. Lester the Unlikely. Look at that shit. Who the hell does he think he is? So, Lester the Unlikely was released in 1994 for the Super Nintendo. It was an exclusive to the Super Nintendo. If you were unfortunate enough to own this game, then you were the unlikely one. Now let's take a look at the uh, box art right here. As you can see there, that's Lester. Kind of looks like a Harry Potter, to a certain extent. 
I guess that he was supposed to be either a geek or a nerd or something like that, but that would be an insult to both geeks and nerds. That woman in the background's like, get the hell away from me. I'm, I'm not dating you. you. Smell like shit. I'm not exactly sure what the hell that is, but it looks like a totem pole or a tree, perhaps, and it's very evidently pissed off. You put me in this game, now I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker. What does he think he's from Pitfall? Get off my screen. So right here it gives you like a whole rundown on who Lester is. He's a geek. And for some damn reason he decides he wants to fall asleep right next to a ship next to the ocean. I mean what what gave him the idea that that's a smart idea? And then all of a sudden, what the hell is this? The boat sinks like the damn Titanic and he's out in the middle of the water. Trying to swim back. Because he's a stupid shithead. And then all of a sudden he swam to an island where nothing likes him and he looks like a pulling dynamite or something like that. Look at that. He can't even stand up straight. I mean, look at this guy. Look, look how he walks. What kind of shit is this? Is this is a joke. I mean, that alone is pretty funny. I and mean, I can't imagine developers thinking to themselves, oh, ho, ho, yeah, this is going to sell millions of copies. I mean, look at this. This is a blockbuster. I mean, where the hell did they come up with the idea of this? You can see here, when you try to jump around, you can, you can barely jump, which, you know, might be pretty realistic. And the guy can't even stand straight, and uh, if I try to jump up there, you have to hold down the up button in order to jump upwards. And you jump down here. Wait, what? What the hell is he doing right there? Don't tell me he has to take a piss. Alright, so we're walking down here near a tree. I'm not even sure what the hell we're supposed to be doing in this game. So if you push this button right here on the uh, Super Nintendo controller, I'm not sure what that is, but I think he's trying to shove or hit. That's his version of punching someone, which is, uh, mm. <laughs> that's not going to even kill a fly. I think we can hurt ourselves a little bit. Whoa, 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 chicken shit. Alright. So, this chicken shit asshole just ran from a crab. I'm gonna try to go over here again. What the hell's the point of this game? So, what am I supposed to do? Punch that crab right in the face? Or is that a lobster? I don't know. Let's try to hop over it. Are you kidding me? You see, when he sees something, he actually runs back by himself. And he saw the turtle. Out of all things to be afraid of, it's a damn turtle. And he ran back into the crab and killed himself. Uh, I can't believe I'm even playing this game taking it serious because it's definitely a piece of shit. Alright, you can actually kick also. I didn't know that. So let me guess, you can actually kick this fucking thing? Talk about animal abuse. I'm pretty sure that's a canteen, but no matter what button I push, I can't pick the shit up because the game sucks. So in this game, we basically abuse animals. So you just run around with this freaking nerd and, and you kick the little bastards. Pooh. Take that, you son of a bitch. So far, he has yet to kill something, though, which, you know, pretty good. I don't think he's going to be able to kill anything. Look at him. So you have to hold down the button in order to push the rock, but you can see when he pushes the rock, he's like all the way on the damn thing, which doesn't make any sense. So let's push it over here. There better be something good on the other side, I'll tell you right now. This game is awkward. Climb up here and jump down here. And, whoa, what do you know? He dies. Electronic Arts! So here we are playing Shaq Fu for the Super Nintendo. It's probably the most famous shitty game of all time. And it may not be the shittiest game on the Super Nintendo, but it's the most famous. Look at that title screen. It actually looks pretty cool. I can see right here I picked dual mode. I'm not exactly sure what the hell that is, but... Yeah, we have dual mode right here, and you have various different characters. The animation actually looks pretty nice. Uh, I do like the animation. Nice and smooth, and the characters actually look... Interesting. Yeah, first of all, we have Shaq versus Shaq. Kind of a strange way. It almost looks like Mortal Kombat or something. Look at this. Remember, the last time I played it was the Sega Genesis version. Not really that big of a difference between that and the Super Nintendo version. They're both really crappy uh, 
fighting games to say the least. I actually forgot how to do moves in this game, but as you can see here, I just got my ass kicked. Got a little foot shuffle going on there. Yeah, take that, you son of a bitch. It, the, you know what? The animation's really nice. The graphics are actually not that bad. Uh, the, uh, I don't know. There's something about this game that's a little off. The movement is a little delayed. So when you jump around, I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't feel the right way. I don't know. Something's a little off on the game. And uh, it's definitely, doing moves on this game kind of sucks. This is possibly the most embarrassing game over screen or continue screen of all time. Look at that. How does it feel to play as Shaq and get your ass kicked by a Shaq, motherfucker? Come on, man. Leave me alone, man. So, uh, yeah, it's, instead of, like, the usual fighting game when you continue the game, you can actually choose a different character. Guess what? You get thrown into, uh, another match with the same exact character, and this looks like something out of Mortal Kombat once again. Look at that. It's like, I don't know what to say about this game. Definitely remember back when uh, my cousin actually owned this game on Sega Genesis. We actually did have to look in the menu quite a bit to play this game, because that's the only way that we were able to pull off moves. Got a game over screen right there, and he's pointing his finger at him, saying, Hey, what the hell's wrong with you? This game sucks. So just for the hell of it, I actually looked up to see if I could find a manual of Shaq Fu for Super Nintendo, and I actually came across it. And uh, the problem is, there's actually no clear explanation on how to do moves on this game. It's just basically, try pressing control pad in any direction while pressing your attack buttons to see what happens. Well, no shit. They might as well write, fuck you, figure out the moves on your own. What the hell is wrong with you? This game sucks. If there was a, uh, what the hell is that? A worst first person shooter game on the Super Nintendo, it would be probably this one right here. Super 3D Noah's Ark. And uh, as you can see, this is a little demonstration of uh, this game right here. And, uh, it's basically some sort of ASPCA nightmare. And here's your main menu right there and the background title screen, whatever that is. It actually looks pretty cool, I guess. It was Ark 3D, and yeah, basically this game is using what looks like a Wolfenstein 3D type engine on the Super Nintendo. That's another game that wasn't really the greatest on Super Nintendo, but it was playable. Uh, he appears to be having a slingshot. You can see right here, Noah's Ark, all the cages that hold the animals have been busted open, and there looks like there's a or goat on the loose. What the hell is that? Yeah, take that, you goat son of a bitch. But when you shoot the goat, you pretty much stone him to the point of where he's unconscious. That's the animal abuse. What the hell? There's another animal. What is that? Another goat. How many fucking goats are on this boat? So what else could we possibly find in this game? More goats. And more goats. I mean, how many fucking goats do they need on Noah's Ark? What the hell is going on here? And then we have some cages over here that have absolutely nothing in them. I bet they were used for goats. Is that a noose to hang myself after playing this game? That's probably goat piss. No in this game, there's nothing but goats in this game. And we have more goat piss. We have whatever that purple... What? Oh, look, it's another goat. And these goats are freaking assholes. They want to kill you. I mean, you go out of your way to freaking save these bastards, and the only thing they want to do is freaking kill you with their horns. What the hell? Oh my god, those goats are fast. Oh my god. Alright, so we're in a completely different level now. And what the hell? He has a different weapon. Look at that. I've never seen the game pass this point. And what is that thing? Is that an antelope? What am I supposed to... What the fuck is that? Oh my god. Let's get out. Oh, the game has some lag too. Apparently, oh, there's those goats again. Apparently, there are different animals in this. Like, every freaking animal on the freaking Ark has gone postal and they want to kill Noah. Oh, shit, what the hell? What the hell was that? Was that a bull? And, uh, you can tell the, the, the wall textures kind of look like, uh, more menacing looking, dude. Dark looking. What the hell is that? Is that the satanic whore Babylon with horns on her head? What the hell is that?
It was a Nazi goat. So when you think of Super Mario, you probably don't think of uh, bad games. Super Mario usually has pretty decent games. Had a lot of good games on the NES, a lot of good games on the Super Nintendo, but guess what? Mario is missing is a bad Super Nintendo game. Check out the animation. The animation is pretty cool looking, but yeah, for the most part, it looks a little sluggish. You can actually run a little bit. That's pretty cool. Run, pretty much walk through any of these stores right here. You don't know what the hell's going on. And then all of a sudden you, uh, where the fuck am I? Warp out in the middle of like, what the hell is this? City. Oh, you have to walk this way. Every other fucking Mario game, you walk to the right. Why, why, why is it that you have to walk to the left in this one? So yeah, you're in like some town of some sort. What the hell city? I have no idea what the hell's going on or what you're supposed to do, but yeah. That, it's like Princess Peach right there. That was just fun. What the fuck are we supposed to be doing here? That's the pause screen right there, which happens to be more entertaining than the actual game itself. What the hell? So you're telling me if you hold down the down button on the controller, you can actually walk to a different set of buildings crossing the road? I didn't... What, the, what kind of shit is that? I can go through the tunnel over here, and then you walk to uh, who the hell knows where. I guess if you push uh, pause, there's probably a map. I'm assuming that that map actually shows you where exactly you are, walk straight down here, you can actually walk up this road right here. What the hell is that thing? That is the ugliest looking character model I've ever seen. So I, I was able to manage to actually walk down to a different uh, portion of the, whatever the hell this map is, but... It's beyond me on how to walk actually up to the, uh, the road I was at before. There's got to be a way of doing it, but I have no idea. I'm pushing up, and it's not going up. I'm pushing up with a bunch of button combinations, and it's not walking up. And I have no idea why Nintendo would actually make a game. This is an actual first-party Super Mario game. I have no idea why they would actually make a game with difficult controls like that. I, mean, I don't know what the hell they're thinking, but... Yeah, this game is... Yeah, this is it. This is Mario's missing, and, you know, as of right now, this cartridge is about to go missing in the garbage, because this game sucks. And here we are playing Bill Lambers Combat Basketball. So, Bill Lambers Combat Basketball released in 1991 on the Super Nintendo. Now, uh, this was a uh, sports game, and there was quite a few bad sports games back in the day, of course. There was nothing really good about too many sports games. There's a few decent ones, but for the most part, they were all bad. Now, this one is exceptionally bad. We're not talking about Shaq Fu bad. We're talking about possibly worse than Shaq Fu. I mean, look at the box art right here. Yeah, it looks like it's a pretty decent, cool game. If you did not read any reviews and you saw that on the shelf, you like basketball, and hey, you might actually pick it up and play it. So, let's check it out. We had the title screen coming up right here somewhere. Here it is. It's like a bunch of pissed off men right away. Look at that. Combat basketball. What the hell is combat basketball? It sounds like you play basketball, but you get hurt playing it. Let's check it out. So this is your main menu right here. It actually doesn't look that bad. The main menu is very basic. Some uh, very fancy music in the background. And we're going to pick amateur. One player. What the hell is this? Okay. Begin play. And this is the game right here. I have no idea what the hell this is. Yeah, I do know it's supposed to be combat basketball, but this, I'm not sure what the hell this is. So this is a top-down view basketball game, which is pretty strange. I never thought I would see something like that, because you would imagine it's a little bit more difficult to play from top-down view, but... Yeah, the controls are definitely uh, challenging. I mean, I passed it to my guy, and for some reason my uh, opponent caught the ball instead. I mean, what the hell? Let's try again. Again, he passed it to the wrong guy. What the hell's wrong with this game? Oh, ho, ho, and he scores. This game is an asshole. What the hell's going on here? Oh, I have to... Oh, I actually got the ball. Hey, what do you know? 
about fucking time. Now, how do you toss the ball? Come on. What kind of shit is this? What button do you push? See, obviously, I don't know how to play the game, but... but oh, you can definitely hit. That's pretty cool. It's not even comparable to NBA Jam. NBA Jam is actually a good game. This game is... So far, subpar. Hey, it looks like they're playing with a beach ball. Boy, that's real combative, huh? Maybe that's the reason why the ball glides so slow in the air, because it's not an actual basketball, it's a beach ball. Look at that. You know, what a piece of crap. No, what a piece of shit! What is this game, Glow Gravity? Why are they moving so damn slow? This is supposed to be combat basketball. Now I'm gonna take my slow-ass time to make a score. Let me see the computer game. Well, yeah, the computer's kicking my ass because the controls don't make any damn sense. Oh, if the controls were better, maybe the game would would have been a better game, but... No, I'm just kidding. That's not happening. I mean, this game looks like it should have, should have been a, like a hockey game instead, because usually a top-down view sports game, definitely a hockey game. But for a basketball game, come on. Doesn't make any fucking sense at all. Now, I don't even know how to shoot the basketball. What button do you push to shoot the fucking basketball? I don't get it. I mean, the graphics itself kind of look like something on the Sega Master System, kind of. Get out of my way, bitch. That's the only good thing about this game is you can hit people. The other good thing about the game is turning it off, completely off. It is Wizard of Oz. What a great movie. It took many, many, many decades for Wizard of Oz video game to come out. So the Wizard of Oz video game released in 1993, it was based off the 1939 movie, Wizard of Oz. And obviously, if you're a fan of the Wizard of Oz, uh, the box art looks pretty damn cool, and uh, you definitely want to pick it up and play it. So, uh, what could possibly go wrong with this? Let's check it out. And in the background, you hear the famous Wizard of Oz music. Sounds awesome. So the title screen looks pretty good, and the uh, main menu does not look good, it looks stupid. And you can hear in the background, this game is so shitty that my cat's sick and shit. Not sure if my microphone picked that up, but he's digging in the litter box. He's trying to escape from the shittacular game that we have on display here. And of course he hates dogs with a passion, that might be the reason why he's taking a shit right now. I mean, look at that. As you can see here, they kind of like tie in the storyline from the movie into the game. Got the little dog, Toto, I believe that's his name. You got a little cow in the background, you got the barn and all that stuff, and you're probably going to see a tornado in a second. It's been a while since I saw the movie, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen next. Here comes the tornado, just like in the movie. At least the introduction, oh, at least the cattle is smart enough to take cover. Not even a dog can wake this bitch up. I mean, this dumb bitch is taking this, uh, a snooze during a tornado outside. I mean, what the hell? Look at that. And yeah, she's still sleeping. How's that even possible? What the hell does she take? And I guess this is where the game begins. We have a uh, couple of, almost like a ball floating towards us. What the hell is that? So they kind of gave you like a role-playing type of feel to it, where you have to read a lot of shit. So I'm going to skip over all that, because I don't feel like real. And then you have the evil witch. That definitely looks like the evil witch. Ha 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 So, so far the game does feature a lot of the stuff from the movie, which is actually pretty good so far. So, what makes the game shitty? Let's play it and find out. And right away we have the yellow brick road, which is pretty good. I don't recall lemons falling from a tree and trying to kill you in the movie, but that's that's pretty weird. Then all of a sudden, once you walk inside this door, you have a chair attacking you. What the hell is that? I mean, come on. That's something you will see out of Alice in Wonderland, not Wizard of Oz. So, immediately when you start playing the game, you start seeing things that are not in the movie. And this right here appears to be some type of a puzzle game that... Alright. Doesn't make any fucking sense at all. What the hell is this? The music in this puzzle game is horrible! What the hell is this music? It makes your ears bleed! Oh, I killed the dog now! What the hell? So far, this game is a fucking nightmare compared to the movie. I mean, what exactly am I supposed to be doing? There's a frog. Check out the frog. Why the fuck is there a frog here? I don't recall there being a frog in the actual movie, but for some reason... Uh, you have to kill the frog? Wait, where, where the hell did I go? What the hell just happened? You gotta be fucking kidding me. 
tell me I start. I'm I'm at the beginning again. What the hell kind of shit is that? So you're telling me a fucking frog killed me? And I ended up being at the beginning of the game. What the kind? Of, what? I, 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 oh my god! I don't even know what to say. So we finally made it to the end of the level, and that was torture. I can only imagine the torture I'm about to experience once I walk forward. Now, as you can see there, that definitely looks like it came from the movie, which is surprising. And then, ooh, yeah, all of a sudden you have a map that you have to use to guide yourself to different levels, so, wow. So, let's uh, check out the next level, I guess. Alright, so... I guess we're going here. Oh, uh, this is the same place I was in before, what the hell? I want to go back. Well, at least that's one good thing. You don't have to walk through the whole damn stage again. Okay, so apparently we have to somehow go over here. And what the hell is that? Is that a cactus cat? That is some scary shit. Why are we walking over? Oh, oh, what the hell? <laughs> we have turkey, oh, turkey vultures. Oh, you can kick. But you can't kick in midair. So that doesn't really help. I guess one thing that made the game really bad was that... So far, what the hell just happened? What the fuck? How did I die? Oh, at the end, yeah. And here we are playing the Wayne's World on the Super Nintendo. I'm not really excited about this at all. It's probably not a good idea. Well, there's the title screen. Nothing fancy here. So Wayne's World on the Super Nintendo was released in 1993 and it was based off the 1992 movie and uh, as you can see here the cartridge and the box are pretty much look as what you would expect. It's nothing really fancy. It looks like they just cropped the picture right from the movie and plopped it right on the box art and yeah. So you're not really too sure what you can expect from this game so uh, let's check it out. And here we have the uh, introduction to the game, or maybe this is a little bit of a gameplay demo, but... This game... Looks like it sort of used partial digitized graphics for the heads. Kinda. And then the rest of the bodies are cartoonish. Looks like garbage. And we have the introduction right here, Wayne's World, all that bullshit. Some noxious. So we're gonna... Go into the game right here, and right here they're having a little bit of an introduction before you play the game. Gives you a little story behind it. And this is definitely one of the worst Super Nintendo games of all time. Let's check it out. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? Twice. Alright, it's too much talking. I hate games that have too much talking. This pisses me off. Alright. It takes like a minute just to get into the damn game. I mean, look at this. I mean, if I really wanted to watch the movie, I would watch the movie, but... They didn't have to reenact the whole damn movie before you play the game. I mean, come on. Holy shit, they're still talking. Do these guys ever shut up? Oh, this might be the start of the game, finally. Alright, well, so we're finally in the game. Yeah, this is the game right here. You actually hold a guitar. So after like a 10 minute introduction, this is what we get. And uh, the game is basically a platformer. A real shitty one at that. It's one of those platformers that definitely suck because you have to watch out where you are. I mean, what the hell is that thing? It's some type of a musical instrument that's attacking you. That's basically what happens in this game. You get attacked by musical instruments. It was like a maybe a bagpipe or something. Or something. I don't know what the hell that is, but... One thing I like about the game is pretty cool is, uh... The platform itself, like... Things that you jump on is like old stereo equipment. Oh, look at that, that's pretty cool. But that's literally the only cool thing about the game. I suppose we have to make it to the end of the platform, wherever the hell that may be, because the platform itself is a clusterfuck, because... You don't know whether you have to... Go up or down on the platform, because the platform can go, can go either way. Like I can easily see this is probably one of those games that you would rent back in the day and bring it back to the movie store within a couple days because you're like, oh, this game sucks. Give me my money back, Blockbuster. This is a piece of shit. Yeah, I wasted my money on this shit. 
Are you kidding me? Now, with that being said, we're going to end it right here because there's nothing really good about the game. Now, I believe this is another movie game. Oh, it's made by Sony. How you like that? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Last Action Hero. Last Action Hero for the Super Nintendo was released in 1993. The same year that the film was released. Which means that maybe the game was developed before the uh, the actual film released. Or maybe the game was developed really quick. That the box art looks exactly just like what you would expect it to look like. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, you have that kid. And you have La Last Action Hero right there on the... Uh, box art and the cartridge and I would only expect this to be probably a platformer of some sort let's check it out now, this is a game I never actually played before so I don't know what I'm getting myself into let's check it out title screen wasn't really that impressive look at that haircut storyline of what happened basically the kid got sucked into the movie or whatever and there's Arnold Schwarzenegger I assume Kind of looks like him a little bit, not, not quite. I changed my mind. That does not look like Arnold Schwarzenegger at all. Look at that. I have a feeling that's what this game's about to be. Well, the graphics, for one, they actually look not bad for Super Nintendo, I can tell you that much. Well, not the character, but the actual background. You can see there's like three layers. And it actually looks pretty good. And this guy with a knife coming at me, what the hell? Hey! Yeah, take that, bitch. Well, the uh, fighting is a little delayed. So you have to definitely like hit the button like way, way ahead. How you like that, asshole? It's, uh, he doesn't kick quite fast enough. So this appears to be some type of a beat-em-up game. Or more like me getting my ass kicked game. I mean, look at this guy with the baseball bat. What a prick. I can tell you right now that the uh, controls are horribly delayed. So by the time he... <laughs> By the time that you even get a chance to hit your enemy, your enemy already hit you, basically. That's basically what happens. And that's no fun. No fun at all. It's gonna do a kick. Whoa. Watch this. Whoa. Kick. How you like that, bitch? Stop it. Stop. This guy with a baseball bat hits. Like he's trying to hit a home run, for Christ's sake. And here we are. We have Arnold Schwarzenegger doing soft punches. He's not even... Taking this fight serious. And the kick is ridiculous because... It's like he doesn't even connect. You have to wait. It's just so delayed that it's not, it's not even playable. I mean, this is like, what, real life? I mean, if this guy's swinging at you with a baseball bat and someone's trying to stab you with a knife, chances are you're going to get your ass kicked, but... This is supposed to be a video game. You're supposed to be able to, you know, overcome the impossible. But no, not in this game. So you're telling me you have to actually jump over this guy and keep hitting him in the face? Let me see if it works. It's a very, very bizarre strategy, but it appears to be working. So I guess that's the only way of beating that guy. You have to actually keep... Oh, God. So as soon as you kill that guy, look, there's another one. I mean, there's no point in playing the game if shit like that happens. Forget about it. It's a nice little fancy game over screen for a shitty game, I can tell you that much. And, uh, this is the fourth movie game in a row. Don't get your hopes up. You'll see in a second once it pops up here. It's Bay Bay Kids the Game. Bay Bay Kids the video game was released in 1994 on the Super Nintendo, and it was based off the 1992 cartoon film. Uh, for those of you who have seen the actual movie, Baby Kids, the uh, box art looks quite familiar. So check that out. Expecting this to be a platformer of some sort. So I guess right away, once you uh, get past the title screen, you have to pick a character. You can either choose the uh, girl or the boy. I'll stick with one of them. I'm not sure which one I picked, but we'll find out. It gives you a whole little uh, story behind what you're doing right here. Before you went to the game. And here's the game right here, and... You know, just like most movie games, you have... Things going on in, in the, the actual game itself that have nothing to do with the movie. Which I... Don't remember seeing any of those characters in the movie except for... My character, and that's it. Although it's been a long time since I actually saw Baby Kids. 
So this is some type of a beat em up and I can tell you that the frame rate is pretty horrible on it. it almost looks like they kind of tried to rip off the uh, Simpsons game. We have a creepy guy in a mouse suit trying to uh, do whatever the hell it is he's trying to do. And then you have Bill motherfucking Clinton running around looking for women. Hey, put me down, you rapist. What the hell is this? You grab me by my neck and try to kill me. I ain't seen no women jogging around here, so leave me alone, Bill Clinton. So this is weird. These, uh, <laughs> these enemies are not really trying to fight you. I don't get what's going on here. So what the hell am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to kill these guys? Seems like it takes forever for them to freaking die, man. What the hell? Oh, he lost his glasses. He's not wearing his glasses anymore. He's probably real pissed off now. So he went from looking like Bill Clinton to looking like Odd Job with no hat. Oh yeah, too bad it's not like Doom where you walk beside the the enemy and the enemy accidentally hits the other enemy and they beat each other up. That'd be awesome. What the hell? He lost his head. And for some damn bizarre reason, he looks like Gomez from the Adam Family. That's really, really bizarre. So this is a button masher. This guy keep hitting the button. And I don't know if we're getting anywhere in the game because it's taking forever to skip past this part. Oh, whoa, whoa, we can actually, if you hold down one of the uh, shoulder buttons and hit punch, you can actually uh, do an uppercut. That's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Time's up, what the hell? I did not even realize there was a time limit. It's probably impossible to do because these guys don't die exactly that easily. They don't fight back, but they don't die that fast. So you can kick their ass all day long. They just, eventually they'll die, but it takes forever. Oh, you can throw baseballs. So in order to throw baseballs, you have to actually hold down the shoulder button and hit B. So I guess the shoulder buttons are strong attacks. What? Oh, wait a minute. So you're telling me you don't have to kill all the enemies to make it to the end? Where'd Pee Wee go? Now we are in the second level. And there we have uh, another character from the, uh, the game itself. And there's another one too. The baby right there throwing shit. Breaking stuff. Yeah, what exactly are we supposed to do in this level? This game is so sloppy. I don't know, whoever programmed this game did a bad job. If you hold down the down button, you literally, you walk dead still. You, you don't even go anywhere. I push up, same thing. I mean, the movie was pretty popular back in the day, so I, this game is nothing but a cash in on the movie. It's basically all of this. It's very, look, you jump up in the air, it's so sluggish. The animation is sluggish, the controls are buggy. You hold up and down, you're still walking. Yeah, this game sucks. So here we are playing Race Driven on the Super Nintendo. Oh yeah, this is going to be really exciting. Race Driven was a quite the popular game on the PC back in the day. And as you can see here, this is a little demonstration of how the game looks on the Super Nintendo. And you get what, like... Maybe two frames per second. Look at that. What a masterpiece. Anyway, was that a cow? And here we are driving up on the bridge. And how the hell do you even control your vehicle and drive straight on the road with a frame rate like that? Look at that. And let's pick a vehicle right here. Let's see if we can pick the uh, Sportster Auto. Hopefully we can gain a little bit of speed out of that. We have uh, three different tracks to choose from. We'll choose this monstrosity right here. God, we have like two other vehicles on the screen. Can the Super Nintendo even handle it? What the hell? They all... Where the hell did everybody go? Oh my god. Whoa, what's going on? Oh my god, I already broke my vehicle. Oh, you get, we get a replay. Look at this. Two frames per second never looked better. Look at that. So when the Super Nintendo did have some sort of a chip that allowed... These type of games to actually perform better, but it didn't work out too well with this game. I don't think this game took advantage of that technology. And as you can see there, driving normal in the game, your vehicle just crashes. What the hell's the point? I do own this game on the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn version is actually pretty good. I actually uh, enjoy it very much. It's a little... Uh, Primitive looking for a Sega Saturn game, and it actually runs quite well. Uh, on the Super Nintendo, on the other hand, it runs like shit. I mean, 
you have to think to yourself, when this game was being developed, and uh, it was being tested out by the developers, I mean, what the hell made them even think about even releasing this game to begin with? It barely plays. It's like two frames per second. You're like one frame off from like having a freaking screenshot. I mean, what the hell? Yeah, game over. All right, here we are playing Rap Jam out of the Super Nintendo. Yeah, Rap Jam. I guess Rap Jam Volume 1. Maybe there was a Volume 2 that I don't know about, but hey, this is Rap Jam Volume 1. Oh yeah, that music. Let's play the game. We have the main menu right here. We have Championship Mode, Challenge, and the Option Menu. Authority by nature, so this game actually has real actual rappers in the game. You see right here, this is actually pretty cool. Kind of reminiscent to that uh, Death Jam Vendetta game. Let's pick LL Cool J. Alright, so this appears to be some sort of a, a basketball game. Alright, let's get to the game. There's a whole bunch of different things that are popping up. Here we have the game right here. And what the hell is going on here? So basically, this is like a one-on-one -on -one basketball game featuring uh, rappers. And uh, the graphics uh, look... Uh, they look okay, for the most part. Uh, I don't think the rappers look recognizable in the, those character models. And the actual gameplay itself, uh, the controls kind of feel a little off. Just like most of the games that we're playing today. Uh, you know, to be honest, the, uh, the animation does look a little clunky. I would say the best part of the game so far is definitely the graphics, minus the character models. The character models really don't look like the rappers at all. But the, uh, the controls... I don't know. It feels... Something doesn't feel right. But yeah, if, this game is definitely like... I want to say probably like an NBA Jam ripoff. I mean, uh, rap became very, very popular in the 90s. So I guess, yeah. Just like anything popular in the 90s. It ended up with a video game somehow. I mean, look at Shaq Fu. Shaq had his own video game. It wasn't even a freaking basketball game. It was a fighting game. Somehow I made a three-pointer. That was pretty cool. But the game still sucks. Look at it. And where the hell is the rap music? What the hell? I mean, uh, Def Jam Vendetta. Those Def Jam fighting games had it right. Those games were actually pretty good. But this game right here. I mean, what the... What the hell is that? I mean, the least you could do is put the music in the background. What the hell? Yeah, this is clearly an NBA Jam ripoff. But realistically, it's too shitty to be an NBA Jam ripoff. It really is. And what sucks is that there's a separate jump button. So when you get next to the actual hoop itself, you have to push a separate jump button and a separate button to actually shoot the ball. And whoever thought that was a good idea is a freaking moron. It fucking sucks, this game. And here we are playing, you'll see in a second, after we get by all this stuff, Revolution X, the Aerosmith game. Now, Revolution X was originally released in the arcade in 1994. It was a light gun shooter with an acquired taste of rock and roll. And then, one year later, this happened. Now, uh, this game right here, it was pretty good on the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. But the 16-bit counterpart was, uh... Not so good. Let's check it out. So before we go into the game, we have a little introduction. And you know what? Just about anyone who was popular back in the 80s or 90s got their own video game. And Aerosmith was no exclusion from the bunch. He got his own video game. Look at this. Los Angeles, November 11th, 1996. Oh boy. Takes place in 1996. Generation X is in effect. Wow, the Super Nintendo version has voice. What the hell? Have a little course here on the screen. We got that helicopter. Look at it. And you see the game, the graphics are terrible. They're interesting. The PlayStation Sega Saturn version is definitely much better. And as you can see here on the Super Nintendo version, you have a little sprite man that you have to shoot and kill. Look at this. You can barely see him. A shooter on rails. You just shoot whoever's shooting at you for the most part. And right here, we are going to go inside the building eventually. Or maybe not. You can see these little characters are trying to kill me, but you know what? I'm fucking them up instead because they suck. And then all of a sudden you have this tank showing up trying to shoot missiles or whatever the hell that shit is at you. 
Hey, what the hell kind of shit is this? This game right here is just not exactly the uh, Super Nintendo game that you want to be playing. There's probably definitely better games out there. You see right here you have to actually hit these buttons in order to tell your character which way you want to move. We're moving over here, I'm not sure where the hell we're going, but we'll find that in a second. Meanwhile, I just shoot all these bastards. Shoot them! Ba -ba 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 -ba. How do you like that, bitch? So throughout the game, you have uh, various different Aerosmith music throughout the game, which is actually pretty cool, but again, the uh, Super Nintendo does not have CD audio, so you're not getting the real music. It's 16-bit music, which nothing wrong with that, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, considering that Nintendo usually censors their games, we actually have a scripper right there, which is pretty interesting, because usually they don't allow stuff like that in their games, but check that out. That's probably the best part of the game right there. Out of all the worst games I've reviewed for the past couple weeks, this is probably one of the better ones right here. This actually might fall under, it's so bad, it's good. But this version of the game is just a very, very watered down basic version of the game. is. Not exactly enjoyable for the most part. And as you can see there, there's a stage where Aerosmith is about ready to perform. And you're about to see it in a second, hopefully. Maybe not. I mean, the game is very repetitive. You have the same enemies over and over again. It's definitely not the greatest game in the world. Batman Forever. I mean, you can see this one coming from a mile. This game is definitely not the type of game that you want to be playing on the... Uh, Super Nintendo. Batman Forever released in 1995 on the Super Nintendo, which is quite late in the lifespan of the Super Nintendo. And in general, Batman Forever released on just about everything during that time, including the Sega Genesis, the Game Gear, the Game Boy, and the PC. This game was a whore. So as you can see here, this is what the box art looked like, and you know, the popularity of the movie back in the day. Of course people are going to go out and buy the game. Let's see if the game is as good as the movie. The game does have pretty good music though. But we have uh, a little introduction here. Probe Entertainment keeps going on and on. I'm about ready to torture myself. Now, the introduction of the game is actually pretty cool. I'll admit that. That looks awesome. Look at that. That's actually pretty cool. Batman Forever. Look at that. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Looks pretty cool, right? Alright, let's go into the game. We're playing the game on normal mode. You can see this game is digitized. Like Mortal Kombat. So you can either be Robin or Batman, so one or the other. Yeah, this game has a little bit of an introduction that's fancy. You'll see in a second. After I get by all this bullshit. Very, very well polished game. Look at this. That is crazy for Super Nintendo. Check that out. I have no idea what the fuck that is, but it's awesome. Yeah, like I said, this is the most fanciest shitty game on Super Nintendo. This maze lasts forever, man. What the hell? Looks are very, very deceiving. This game looks freaking awesome, but we you get into the game. You're gonna, you're gonna find out different. There is one really bad thing about this game, and it's the controls. And then here we have the game right here, and immediately it looks like Mortal Kombat with Batman. That's basically what, what it looks like. Look, the place just like it too. Except the controls fucking suck. What the hell is that? Freaking explosion come out of nowhere. And this guy uppercuts me like freaking Mortal Kombat. It's basically all- What the hell is that? He grabbed me by my freaking balls and threw me. Let's have a replay on that. Is that what I saw? What the hell is that? What the fuck is that? Is that a loading screen? Are you kidding me? You have to run around and you have to kill these guys for here. Kick their ass. The graphics actually look pretty good, I'll admit that. But the gameplay is just stale. Lackluster. And then once you get to the end right here, you're like, okay, what the fuck do I do here? And this took me a while to figure this out, because if you don't have the manual, you're pretty much in shit's creek. But, okay, I kind of forgot how to do it again. I don't remember how to do it! What the fuck? I think there is a button that you push, you see, or down, up, or... What the fuck did they have to make the control so fucking difficult? Okay, so what makes the game shitty is the controls suck. There is a button combination that allows me to jump to the layer that's above my head, but I don't know what the fuck the button combination is, and I don't really have the desire to look it up either, because it's really fucking annoying. Well, you know, the real question is, why the fuck did they make the controls so half-ass in this game? I mean, 
Look at that, you have to actually push a select button to do that shit. Look at me, I'm Batman in, in a shitty game. Why do you have to have a combination of certain buttons you have to push in order to jump to the next layer up above you? I don't get it. Why the hell did they do that? I mean, that, that, that makes the game completely difficult. And if you stop playing the game for six months, you go back, you forget how to play the damn game. Here we are playing Space Ace for the Super Nintendo. I never actually played this game before. Originally, Space Ace was a laser disc game that released in the arcade back in 1984. And nearly 10 years later, in 1983, it released on Super Nintendo. Now, while the game was groundbreaking in the arcade back in 1984, uh, let's take a look at how it transitioned over to the Super Nintendo. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. But here it is, the introduction for Space Ace. Experience the torture of Space Ace. And this looks like the title screen. Look at that. It's all fancy. Almost as fancy as the Batman game. Alright, let's check it out. Maybe it's a little bit more playable than Batman. Maybe the controls won't be so shitty. Alright, so in order to read that, you have to tilt your head sideways, which... Not the easiest thing to do. Gotta strain your neck a little bit. So I think this is based off a of laser disc game, if I'm not mistaken. It definitely looks like it's based off a of laser disc game. I can tell by the way it's drawn out. So this gives you the highest score and all that bull crap, huh? So this is basically, I believe, a laser disc game that got ported to Super Nintendo, and we all know that's not going to go well because Super Nintendo cannot exactly do laser disc games. But uh, it's actually a platformer, I guess. What the fuck was that? So wait a minute, I just died that quick? What the hell am I supposed to do? Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me! So if you get hit once, you die. What the hell kind of crap is this where you get hit once, you die? I mean, come on! And then you get that really stupid, annoying video that pops up on the screen. If you can call it a video, because it looks like shit. I mean, porting laser games to the Super Nintendo is like watching a full fled movie on your Game Boy. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, does it? Alright, so if we walk over here. What the fuck? And just to add insult to injury, yes, that is a big, huge dick in the background that they decide to put there in the background right there, as you can see there. Look at that. And uh, every time you get a game over, you have to stare at it. Yeah, this game, is, this game sucks. Dick! And this game is, like, impossible to play. Look at this shit. Son of a bitch, man. This game is an asshole. It's a dick! Out of all the games I've played so far, this may be the hardest, quickest game over I've ever got for a game. I'm not sure. Dick! And here we are playing Mighty Max on the Super Nintendo, made by Ocean. That's one of my favorite uh, developers right there, publishers. Mighty Max. Uh-oh. So, if you are not familiar with Mighty Max, you're not alone. Mighty Max was actually a short-lived cartoon that debuted in 1993. And by 1994, it was off TV. The TV show wasn't that popular. So with that being said, some people never even knew that this was even a TV show. And the game wasn't exactly that popular either. And yeah, let's take a look at this game. Look at the title screen. The title screen looks uh, quite interesting. Looks like someone's going to get their ass beat. Awesome background music. Alright, so I guess right here we have to pick our uh, character. And right away, something doesn't seem right because look how big the freaking eyes are on these characters look like they're on drugs so we're in front of a house and it says volcano and we have a bunch of weird looking characters right here drugs it's pretty interesting let's check this out so this appears to be a platformer of some sort so basically it looks like you shoot things and you collect champs and this game made the what the fuck i mean really you can jump that high Oh yeah, I get it. Hi, because my character's a freaking crackhead. So this game made the uh, top worst SNES games list based on uh, research. Apparently a lot of people don't like this game. I personally never played it before. This is the first time I've actually played this fucking game, but... It appears to be just a basic platformer type game, but you can jump ridiculously high. I mean, we're talking about ridiculously high. I mean, look at this shit. I wouldn't be surprised if you can jump from level 1 to level 2. You know, what the hell is that guy doing? That guy's huge. 
Why is he following me around? Is he actually my friend or something? What the hell is this? So I see you're supposed to collect uh, little gem looking things, but I have no idea like what the hell the purpose of the game is and and jumping on the platforms really suck because there's like no way of controlling how you jump in this game. So you can also push rocks, which, you know, it's one thing that pisses me off is a platformer with no logic. If, if it doesn't have no logic, if it's not straightforward, then what, what the fuck are even, am I supposed to be doing here? I mean, I mean look, I can crawl on the ground too. How fucking exciting is that? So you can pick things up, and then when you throw it, just like jumping, it's like very, very over-exaggerated. You, you would imagine that the... Uh, Whatever the hell it is that you're throwing is going to land just a little bit in front of you, but guess what? You throw it like, you just don't give a shit. So this is exactly what they're experiencing in their head. Pooh! Throwing shit like super fast way across the map. I'm jumping up like 50 feet in the air. So that's what happens when you crack head. Fucking annoying. I mean, look at that. This guy hit. Because, you know why? I can't fucking control my character when he jumps. Now I have a fucking game over. You can't control no crack head. So our next game right here is Rex Ronning Experimental Surgeon, which something tells me this is going to be very similar to that shitty diabetes game. Check it out. Rex Ronan was released in 1994 for the Super Nintendo and it was considered an educational action game. Yeah, there's not really too much hope for this game. Let's check it out. I'm going to start the game right here and... Jake Westboro thought he had it all. A successful sales career with Blackburn Tobacco Company. A beautiful wife and a great car. Alright, so we have a little background story on the game. As you can see there, Jake started smoking when he was 15, but now he's dying from smoking the cigarettes he once sold. Jake's only hope is Dr. Rex Ronan, a brilliant experimental surgeon. Dr. Ronan will shrink himself to near microscopic size and enter Jake's body to fight Jake's diseases. Blackburn Tobacco Company is afraid that if Jake lives, he will tell the world how dangerous smoking is. They will do anything to stop Dr. Ronan. Time is running out. Dr. Ronan must hurry. So I have to go inside the guy's body because he smoked too much cigarettes and he's dying from smoking cigarettes. What kind of fucking game is that? So, what, what the fuck is this, like a dentist game? Oh, you have to shoot the plaque off the teeth. Whatever the hell that shit is. Boy, this is real fun. Look at this shit. This might be the same developer that made the diabetes game. I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, look at this, the game... The controls kind of suck, I can tell you that much. You can also kick, kick the teeth. Wow, look at that. This doesn't make any sense. Why the hell did the game pause? What the hell did this happen? Why is there an explosion on this guy's mouth? So basically, this is a freaking platformer inside this guy's mouth. This is ridiculous. It looks like he ate someone's ass. I mean, who the fuck wants to go home after working all day as a dentist and... Guess what? I want to pop a dentist game into my Super Nintendo and play... a game of basically what I do at work. That doesn't make any, any sense, you know? That sounds really fun, right? I mean, what the hell is this shit? Oh, I died from a... Uh, I mean, what? why is there a robot inside this guy's mouth? I don't get it. Freaking drone. What the hell is this? Oh, this is crazy. What the hell? So now I'm playing like Star Fox, but inside someone's intestines. What the hell? What the fuck kind of cigarettes was this guy smoking? <laughs> you can see up on the top left of the screen that guy... The face on that guy looks like, oh yeah, this is freaking amazing action. It looks like he works for NASA or something. He's watching the screen very carefully. What's this? Is this the intestines or something? What the hell am I doing? I'm going to fly out this guy's ass in a second. And he'll make that same face right there. I guess on the top right of the screen, there's actually a little picture of where I might be in the body. I have no idea, to be honest. This keeps going on and on and on. The trachea complete. Okay, so we're inside the trachea, I guess. And now we're entering the lungs. Ooh, exciting. So now I'm back as uh, this guy right here. As you can see here, we're trying to... What the fuck is that thing doing in this guy's body? I guess to clean the body out. This is really a dumbass game. And where the fuck is there, like, robots? That looks like the robot from Robocop. Why the hell is that thing inside this guy's body? I don't get it. And there's also that round-looking drone thing. I mean, what the hell is that? 
This looks like it came out of a horrible sci-fi movie. What the hell kind of cigarettes was this guy smoking to get that shit in his body? Is that a satellite dish? Motherfucker, that's direct TV in his body. I mean, there's a satellite dish that shoots out lasers inside this guy's body. I mean, that, that doesn't make any damn sense. Unless he got molested by an alien. That might be what happened here. Not cigarettes. I am stuck at a dead end, and I have no idea where to go. This game is one of those platform games that don't make any fucking sense because there's like no... There is a little map up there, but... There's like no way of telling you where you're going or where you're supposed to go, and just like, fuck it. It comes in three languages. This game is pretty fucking horrible. Let's get to the point. Let's get to the fucking point. Hong Kong 97. Oh god, this game is fucking horrible. So not much is known about Hong Kong 97, except for it being a fucked up game. It was developed by a Japanese homebrew developer, Happy Soft. And it, it contains a lot of poor quality images, including copyrighted images. And uh, some of the images in the game are quite graphic. This game also contained cussing, which was unheard of on the Super Nintendo. And this game happens to be extremely rare, so there really is no images of the actual cartridge itself. You know, after playing the game, it does appear to be some sort of propaganda tool. And I'm not sure if this game is tied to the movie, but there's an actual movie of Hong Kong 97 that came out before the game, as you can see here. And uh, I'm not sure if it's tied to the movie at all, but yeah, there is an actual movie called Hong Kong 97. So right there on the front of the title screen, you have uh, actual photos of, I think, Jackie Chan and somebody else. I don't know who the hell the other person is, but the year 1997 has arrived. They heard of fucking ugly reds are rushing from the mainland. Crime rates have rocketed. Hong Kong is ruined. Therefore, the Hong Kong government called Bruce Lee's relative Chin. And it says fucking right there in the... Uh, <laughs> I mean, what Super Nintendo game do you know has fucking? This game actually says fuck. Look at that fuck. And as you go on right here, they say Bruce Lee, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that's not Bruce Lee. I think that's Jackie Chan, who happens to be Chin. But there is a Bruce Lee picture in the background, I think, behind whoever that guy is. It's a very, very bizarre storyline. And once again, that looks like a picture of Jackie Chan. And in, in the background, I don't know what that is. That looks like a Holocaust picture, which looks pretty fucking horrible. And we keep going on and on. And what the hell is that? Why does this have Coca-Cola? And what the fuck are you supposed to do in this game? And what the fuck is that? That appears to be a closed circuit camera footage of what looks like a dead body or something. Which I, it's pretty fucked up. Yeah, this game was never licensed on the Super Nintendo. It was definitely an unlicensed game, but for some reason it became popular because of how shitty it is. It's definitely a real shitty game. This game was probably designed for propaganda. And the gameplay is very, very short, but the introduction is very long. And it's very, very difficult to play. And it has a lot of obscene images in the game. And I'm pretty sure that if you play through the whole game, you're, you're going to probably see worse than that. I'm not sure, but I have no desire to play this game because this game is the absolute worst, shittiest Super Nintendo game of all time. And I have no desire to play any more of it. It's horrible.